When it comes to the pandemic, we're still sorting out competing visions for public space. Take Lake Merritt in Oakland, California, for example. Lake Merritt is this magical tidal lagoon, the first wildlife sanctuary in North America. I haven't been lately, but I have wandered through the virtual neighborhood of Nextdoor.com. And Nextdoor is a buzz with people worried about the crowds and gatherings at Lake Merritt. I've seen lots of people out picnicking, kids, families, not wearing masks. I feel like I'm getting a lot more exercise because I'm constantly jumping out of the way of people. It's annoying to have somebody huffing and puffing from running and they're a foot away from me. And I told my friend, this is the last time I'm coming here. Health officials around the country have been sounding the alarm about crowded parks since sheltering in place began. But during my travels on Nextdoor, I also meet Christina Beach, who speaks of her endless love for Lake Merritt, especially now. I've got construction going on on every single block. I work from home, so I basically have to go escape to the lake just to have a refuge from the noise. And she worries that new rules and citizen policing could make people feel unwelcome at the lake. Weeks ago, she overheard a woman at the coffee shop pleading with a police officer to deal with the crowds. I'm just frustrating that people aren't thinking of positive solutions that preserve what the lake is and instead of thinking about ways to make it a private front yard. <laughs> lake Merritt has long been a flashpoint for debates about who gets to access public space. In 2018, a white woman called the police to report two black men grilling at the lake. Someone is illegally using a charcoal grill in a non-designated area on, um, in Lake Merritt Park. And issues around policing of public space haven't gone away. Jason Corborn directs the Center for Global Healthy Cities at UC Berkeley. He says the pandemic has only added new concerns around equity. Low-income residents are often living in smaller living quarters with no backyard, no front yard, no balcony, no way to get outside. They may be in an unhealthy home, that may have toxic mold or lead or other things that we're not addressing. Corburn says not everybody lives near a well-maintained park, and that's partly because of the history of how and where parks were created. Parks emerged largely as a result of elite visions of contemplation spaces for the wealthy, as if they, people in urban areas would get to the great wilderness of the West with a little microcosm in their urban area. Activists, mostly women, fought to make parks enjoyable for more people. Instead of strict, quiet spaces that catered to wealthy adults, parks became places for children to play. But there are still people who aren't well served by the parks near them. When you've got a park that's built by expert planner designers, it very rarely relates to the local culture or practices that people may want, and they often put restrictions on that park, like, okay, no vending or no barbecues. And that's a problem because part of what people want out of parks is a social space. They're places where we interact with people. That's healthy. Still, during the pandemic, officials worry about the crowds. Boston, Minneapolis, and Oakland have closed off certain streets to cars to give people more space. But Corburn says that's not enough. To say, okay, now just go out and play in the street, I think really ignores the role public spaces play, you know, to create health, but also, you know, to give people a sense of place and a sense of home and ownership. In the meantime, Lake Merritt regulars like Christina Beach say there are ways to go outside and stay safe. A couple of times a day, Beach puts on a mask and braves a walk out of her apartment to the lake. Sometimes joggers get too close, so she freezes, ducks, and then gets out of the way. And often she plops down on a park bench and watches the community in motion from a distance. I feel very grateful that I live next to a beautiful lake. The range of activities are amazing. You can see drummers, you can see little rap groups, you know, bubble machines, jugglers, you have the bird watchers. It just represents the best of open. For Christina and others, outdoor spaces can be both soothing and mellow and kind of a minefield, but it's one that she and so many others will navigate for the sake of getting outside. For Philosophy Talk, I'm Holly J. McDeed.